my entire conversation right now in that corner no. oh good <laughs> it was about that actually oh, <laughs> uh you mean because of my power because cord you know, you're not in the pool. oh i've been in the pool all day i just swapped out 10 minutes ago and ran and hobbled over here no this just happened this just happened like an hour ago it was like change of plans everything's different i'm like okay was your conversation to know about templates? I was, I'll I, tell you what it was, but later. Was not around this way. No, no, no. I was just thinking of sitting with you last night and you working. I hope that it was still kind of awesome. Nice to see you. <clears throat> Glad to be here with all of you. It's been a, a very productive week at the United Nations. I've been pleased to be here with the President. Today the President strengthened, he signed an executive order that strengthened the U.S. government's ability to cut off funding to the North Korean regime and its weapons development program. Despite multiple UN Security Council resolutions, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un continues to threaten the world and his neighbors with provocative nuclear and missile tests. President Trump's new executive order significantly expands Treasury's authorities to target those who enable this regime's economic activity wherever they are located. For too long, North Korea has evaded sanctions and used the international financial system to facilitate funding for its weapons and mass destruction and ballistic missile programs. No bank in any country should be used to facilitate Kim Jong-un's destructive behavior. This new executive order will authorize Treasury 
to impose a range of sanctions, such as suspending U.S. correspondent account access to any foreign bank that knowingly conducts or facilitates significant transactions tied to trade with North Korea. These sanctions will be forward-looking and applied to behavior that occurs following today when President Trump signed the executive order. Foreign financial institutions are now on notice that going forward, they can choose to do business with the United States or with North Korea, but not both. This new executive order enables Treasury to freeze assets of anyone conducting significant trade in goods, services, or technology with North Korea. It also allows us to freeze assets of actors supporting North Korea's textile, fishing, IT, and manufacturing industries. We call on all countries around the world to join us by cutting off all trade and financial ties with North Korea in order to achieve a denuclearized Korean peninsula. As President Trump stated in his speech to the UN General Assembly, it is time for all nations to work together to isolate the Kim regime until it ceases its hostile behavior. We will continue to work with our allies and partners to stop North Korea from using the global financial system to further Kim's reckless behavior. Thank you, and I'd be happy to take a few questions. Um, Mr. Secretary, Jeff Mason for Borders. Can you explain how this will affect China specifically, and what kind of discussions you or your counterparts or others in the administration have had with them about this? Well, let, let me comment. Uh, I had a very productive conversation very early this morning with Governor Zhou at the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, uh, and how we are going to work together. Um, I'm, th this, this action is, is directed at everyone. It is in no way specifically directed at China. And uh, we look forward to working very, very closely with them. But China is its biggest trading partner. Mr. Secretary, can I just read a quick section of the EO? I want to understand what's yes. happening. No aircraft in which a foreign person has an interest that has landed at a place in North Korea may land at a place in the United States within 180 days after departure from North Korea. Uh, and then the similar application to vessels. Any way you could put a, a number on how many ships or aircraft would have been affected by this in pick a, pick a year, pick the last applicable year, so we can get a sense of the scale um, uh, of the EO? It's in that. Uh, I, again, that's another important aspect of the EO, besides for us being able to block financial transactions. Uh, we'll be working very closely with the Coast Guard and others on this. Uh, I'm not prepared to give you a number, but it, it, it's very significant. And further, uh, we can put actions against ports as well. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. First one, why will this round of sanctions work when others have failed? Again, let me be clear. First of all, I don't think other sanctions have failed. Uh, but these sanctions are very significant because not only does it allow us to sanction individuals or entities, but it allows us to freeze or block any transactions with any financial institution anywhere in the world that facilitates any transactions with the blocked person. And just to be very clear, do these sanctions include a plan to target North Korean companies uh, and individuals around the world? Yes, it does. Okay. And any plans for future sanctions? Uh, again, I, I will never comment on future sanctions, but uh, we will continue to review all options. Out in the coming days. Does this represent in any way a uh, rejection or a moving past UN Security Council? No, uh, I don't think in any way. We very much appreciate the UN Security Council resolution and the unanimous support to that. This goes beyond it. What does this do that, that you couldn't get done through the Security Council? Uh, again, as I, I've mentioned, this allows us to block any financial institution that doesn't follow through on the UN sanctions or our additional sanctions. Yeah, over here. When do you expect, sorry, to end repeat the question, when do you expect to make designations under this authority? Again, we'll do designations on a rolling basis. They obviously start with all activity today, so this is forward-looking. This is not backwards-looking. Secondly, secondly, sorry, um, can you say more about your discussions with um, the Central Bank of China? What, what do you understand the scope of their work? Uh, again, those conversations are, are confidential, but as I said, I had a very productive conversation with them this morning.
Jonathan uh, Lear FAP, piggybacking on that, is there anything, just the timeline of it, had there been previous negotiations leading to this point with the bank in China? No, there were no previous negotiations. Uh, first time we discussed it was early this morning, our time. And who broke the subject first, Mr. Secretary? Uh, I, I called them to alert them of this in advance, given their close cooperation with us. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's Margaret Talib with Bloomberg. So I, I wanted to ask part of the same question, which is that uh, China had given some indication a week and a half ago or so of some action. What they did today is completely separate from what they had indicated earlier. And what uh, again, I'm not going to make any comments about what they did earlier, but what they did today, uh, I assume, was as a result of our can, conversation. Can I, my, can I ask my other question? <laughs> well, why don't we come back to you just so we can get other people in here. Uh, Paul Sony from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, can you do you believe that China's actions today reduce the need for further secondary sanctions on Chinese entities? Uh, again, I just comment we look forward to working with them in a very cooperative way, the way we look forward to working with all of our partners. And uh, again, what's important about this is the additional authorities the Treasury has. Sorry, Peter Baker from the New York Times. Can you put this in the context of the President's speech earlier in the week when he talked about you know, more military action? I mean, how, how do these things work together, and what do you expect North Korea to do in response? Um, I'm not going to comment on what I expect North Korea to do. Uh, obviously, is what we've said is the objective is for them to stop their missile tests and give up their nuclear weapons. Uh, as it relates to uh, this is something that has been in the works for a while. I alluded to this. Uh, I believe it was about two weeks ago that uh, I had been discussing this with the President, and this was all part of the President's strategy uh, at the UN this week. Thank you. Um, Secretary Tillerson had said it took a while for the last round of sanctions to actually have an impact or for North Korea to begin to feel them. Um, is there a timeline that you're looking at, in which case? Again, there's no timeline we're looking at. This is forward action on this. Again, I would just emphasize that uh, we hope that there is voluntary cooperation, but to the extent that we have to cut off banks from the banking system in the United States, which obviously would be very significant, we now have those tools to do that. Call any other country's central bank. Uh, I'm not going to make any other comments on confidential discussions I've had with other countries. Uh, it, again, I, I am confirming uh, that I did speak to them this morning. I'm not going to comment on other confidential discussions. Yes, thank you. Lisa Rose with NHK. Um, Secretary, the President earlier thanked Xi Jinping for his bold actions, but would you say that these actions today were enough? And also, would you call on Russia to do put more pressure on Russia? Again, we will call on Russia to do more. Uh, President Trump and President Xi have had very productive conversations, and we appreciate the, the way they're working with us. I'm going to take one more. I'll just follow up on, on my initial question. You said that this was not targeted at China specifically, but China is the largest trading partner with North Korea. So can you spell out how this will affect them and, and how it will affect the U.S. relationship with China with regard to North Korea? Uh, again, as I emphasized earlier, this is targeted at North Korea and anybody that wants to do trade or business with them. And we appreciate the relationship with China, and we look forward to working with them. Thank you, everybody. All right, folks, so that was Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. Uh, we already knew that President Trump was going to sign an executive order to have more sanctions on North Korea, but we didn't know exactly what those sanctions were. But now we know that they are basically banning any bank from doing business with North Korea. And I think that that's really going to be the last nail on the coffin of North Korea. And um, they have one option. And that is give up your nukes or get destroyed. Okay, this is this is literally, literally this is the last straw for, for North Korea. That's it. There is no more sanctions after this. We had already sanctioned them 90% before, before this. So now we're just really, really close to 100%. And North Korea has no other option than to give up your nukes or get destroyed. One or the other, you know, so it's pretty crazy stuff. Nikki Haley, which is the ambassador to the UN, is going to have a press briefing in just a few minutes. 
So if you are new to the community, make sure that you guys click that subscribe button and the notification bell. We're going to shut this down and then we're going to go to, um, to the press briefing of Nikki Haley. She's going to be talking about North Korea, more on the sanctions from a political standpoint, and also going to be talking about other issues that are going on in the UN right now. So there's a lot to talk about. And Nikki Haley is going to have a press briefing in just a few minutes. Let me just take a minute to also uh, shout out our, you know, our um, our moderators that are on the chat, keeping the chat clean and enjoyable for everyone. Carolyn Hall was there. Uh, also, Brian Knight was there. And if you know who else, who else was on here. Um, and other moderators, too, that come in, that pop in once in a while whenever they have time. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, another thing, we are now publishing news articles on our website, stuff that we do not cover here on the channel. We cover on our website or vice versa. All right. So if you guys want to stay up to date on everything that is going on regarding politics, news, everything that goes going on, breaking news, all that stuff. You guys can uh, check it out both here on the channel on YouTube. So subscribe and also on our website, which is goldenstatetimes.com slash news. Again, that's goldenstatetimes.com slash news. So make sure you guys head over there and check it out. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. My name is Jen. I'm from Golden State Times and I'll see you soon. Remember, goldenstatetimes.com slash news.